Hello, it's Leslie Fightmaster for Poppy and Seed. And this class is a new start. So our new start theme, we're going to learn a new pose. And the pose is called Ekapada Kundinyasana, and sometimes it's called Scissors Pose. And I get a lot of people asking me, how do you do that pose? So I'm going to show you that one. We're going to do just a short warm-up today to get us a little bit ready. If it feels like you've warmed up with this short warm-up and you're not warm enough, then go and check out another class, just one of our well-rounded classes, and come back, and then you'll be ready to go. So we'll begin on our backs. Come onto your back. And just draw your knees right into your chest. And gently rock side to side. Start to lengthen your breath. And then reach for the pinky toe sides of the feet. We want to get our hips a little bit open. So into happy baby. And then keeping the hips Opening up, we'll keep the right leg just as it is. Extend the left leg out onto the floor in half happy baby. So it's a little bit deeper of a stretch. Let's take a couple breaths here. And then taking it just a little bit deeper, bend your left knee. Take your right ankle just past the left knee. And bring your hands through to hold onto the shin or hold behind the thigh. So thread the needle pose. And then you can stay here with thread the needle if you're getting a good stretch. And make sure your right hip is drawing forward toward the front of your mat. That way, if, if the knee is drawing in and the hip is hiked up, you won't get as good of a stretch in that hip. So you can keep this or slide your right knee over your left knee, knee on top of knee. Reach for the pinky toe sides of the feet. And it's like being in Gomukhasana pose upside down. This one can be very, very deep of a stretch. So just go to whatever level works for you. Take one more breath here. And happy baby, back to where we started. So in happy baby again, the knees are moving toward the armpits, the tailbone is reaching to the floor. And then we'll keep the left leg as is, extend the right leg out. Still moving that knee in toward the armpit. And then we'll either stay, or actually we won't stay with this. We're just going to take it a little bit deeper and then bend your right knee. Put your left ankle just past the right knee. Bring your hands through. Hold on behind the right leg or the left, or onto the right shin. And then check again if this knee is drifting in toward your chest. Try and bring this left hip forward toward the front of your mat so that the hips are level and the knee and the ankle are about in the same line and flex this ankle. Just a couple breaths here. So we start feeling that stretch maybe a little bit deeper in the hip. Either staying here or a little bit deeper once again, crossing the left knee directly on top of the right knee and reaching for the feet or you could always hold the legs. Draw the legs in toward the chest. As you do, continue to try and drop your tailbone down. So lengthen through the lower back. I like this one, but it's pretty intense. <laughs> and then one more breath. And release it. And roll yourself back and forth, coming on up to seat it. And then we'll make our way into table and then inhale your right leg back behind you lift it from the inner thigh as you exhale we're going to bring your right knee to the outside of your right tricep and then press away from the floor and pull your belly and your ribs in really strongly if it doesn't reach walk in a little bit closer and then left and then right leg up again exhale bring it forward press away from the floor pulling the ribs and belly in and up. It's a little rounding in the upper back. One more time, inhale, exhale. So remember, if it's not touching, walk in closer so that you can get it to touch. One more breath here. And release it, and now we'll do the other side. Left leg straight back from the inner thigh lifting. Drop the outer left hip down. As you exhale, press away from the floor. Try and touch 
your left leg to your left tricep, rounding the upper back, pulling in the belly. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, see if you can touch it again. Press away from the floor. If you're shaking here a little bit, you're doing it correctly. <laughs> Inhale the leg up. Exhale. Try and press it up there. Press away from the floor. Use your belly muscles. Use your leg muscles. And release it. Then, now walk the hands forward about, about a foot in front of you. And we'll take a stretch in the upper back. So hips and heel, or hips and knees line up. But bringing the chest down toward the floor. This pose is called Anahatasana. I had a teacher that used to call this the old dog. It's a, it's a good one. But make sure that your outer upper arms, your triceps, are spinning down toward the floor. The inner upper arms, biceps, are spinning up. And then press firmly into the thumb, first finger side of the hand. Inner wrist presses down and inner forearm. Just another breath here. And then we'll come up, walk the hands back a little bit. So your wrists are just in front of the shoulders. And then tuck the toes, downward dog, stretch all the way back. Bicycle the legs, stretching out a little here. And then as you inhale, come forward into plank. So in plank pose today, as usual, lift the backs of the knees. Make sure your hips and your shoulders are in the same line, tailbones reaching toward the heels, and breathe here. Five breaths. See, if you can use your belly muscles a little bit more, your leg muscles a little bit more, and your arms and shoulders a little bit less. And then shift forward. And slowly, for five, four, put the knees down if you need to, Three, we're coming all the way to the valley. Two, and one. Come on down. Untuck the toes. Peel the chest up, little cobra. In fact, let's interlace the fingers here and reach the knuckles back and lift the chest. Add the legs. Pull in the belly. Breathing here. Breathe more into the chest and less into the belly. And then come down. Rest a moment. And then one more time. Interlace other pinky on top and lift. Let's get a nice little shoulder stretch for us. And release it. Hands by ribs, low ribs, inhaling to up dog, or you can stick with cobra pose and back to down dog. On the inhale, right leg up. Exhale, sweep it forward in between the hands. Then, Pick up your right hand, take it on the inside of the right foot. Take your left knee to the floor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get this knee and this ankle to line up. So you might already feel a pretty big stretch here in the hip. That's what we're looking for. If you want to deepen that stretch, you can take your forearms to the floor or forearms on top of a block. And we're just going to. Get in a little bit deeper for a couple breaths. And then the next part, come on back up onto your hands. Press your right hand on your right calf. Lean back a little bit so you're going to, like you're going to straighten the leg, but don't straighten it all the way. And bring that right shoulder underneath the right knee. Sort of like you're putting on a backpack. And then just pause here for a breath just to get the body used to it. And then we'll just come on out of it, make our way, tuck the toes, downward dog. <clears throat> Left leg up, inhale. Exhale, step in the middle of the hands. Right knee down. Take your left hand on the inside of the foot. Pull the chest forward on an inhale. If you have a good stretch here, stay. If you want to deepen it, Forearms down. Try to keep your knee pointed straight ahead. If the knee goes out to the side, though, turn your toes out to the side as well. But if you can, straight ahead. Just a couple breaths here. Nice hip opening stretch. And then 
left hand to left calf. Back out of the stretch a little. Try and move that shoulder underneath the knee. And then we'll just sink forward again, staying for a couple breaths. Get your new backpack on. One more breath here. And I'll come out of that. <clears throat> Tuck the back toes. Down dog. And then just come down to your knees for a moment. So that's going to be our warm up. So if that's enough for you, let's continue. If it isn't, push pause. Go do one of our total body uh, classes and then come back. Okay, here we go. If you are not paused, we're moving on. From here, I'm going to do the same thing as before. Right leg up and bring it forward. Take the left knee down. Right hand on the inside of the right foot. And then just like we did before, back out of the pose a little. Press your right hand into your right calf. Bring your right shoulder under the knee. Now I'm setting up for Ekapada Kundinyasana. I'm going to move this right foot over to the right so it's out of my way. Now I'm going to take my left hand and slide it back. Now I'm going to start to lean all of my weight forward. And this is a little way to cheat. As you bend your left elbow, try and bring your left elbow right underneath your torso so it's right on your hip bone. And that way, you have a little extra support. And then start to lean forward. Lean, lean, lean. Now begin to press away from the floor until your back leg can come up. So it's sort of like a teeter-totter. You can practice going too far forward, hitting your head. Too far back, your leg won't come off the floor. So see if you can find your middle spot. And that is Ekapada Kuninyasana on one side. And now let's do the other. Left foot forward. I'm going to push the left calf back out of the pose. Push the left hand on my left calf. Get the shoulder to move under. And then I'm going to move my left foot out of the way so that I don't run into it when I'm trying to get into the pose. Then slide the right hand back. So I slide it back. I can bring it in towards center a little bit so that when I bend my elbows, this elbow is going to come right to right where my right hip bone is. So I'll lean forward, bend this elbow in towards center. Lean forward, forward, forward. Lean as far forward as you can to lift the leg up. And then take it back. So let's do it one more time. This time, <clears throat> we'll try without putting the elbow underneath. So right foot forward again. Left knee down. Work the shoulder under. The foot out of the way. Also, you can keep this front knee bent. You don't have to straighten it. So it's going to be the same idea. I'm going to move my left hand in a little bit toward the center of the mat. Lean forward, but this time I have it next to me instead of underneath me. It's harder. <laughs> and then back. Wah, chaturanga. Not so pretty today. Inhale up. Exhale back. And the left leg. Step it up. Right knee down. Work the left shoulder under. And we'll bring this right hand back just a little. But I'm going to bend them like I do for Chaturanga. <clears throat> Ideally, shoulders no lower than the elbows. And bring it alongside instead of under. It's harder to swing back with the elbow nut underneath. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Inhale up. Exhale back. And then come through. Step or hop and sit. Ah, lie down. Just a little short cool down. Set up for bridge. I'll just take a little bridge pose. Feet hips width. Make sure your heels are under the knees. And lift up. And keep your arms pressing down or Roll the shoulders under. And let's release. And hug your knees in. Take your arms out. Drop your knees to the left. Looking right. Just a couple breaths in the twist. And it's cooling down quickly. And then back to center. Knees to the right, leg left. And 
and then center and into Shavasana for just a moment, like about a minute. So take as much time as you need to get comfortable in your final resting pose. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then just rest. Big breath in. Move your hands and your feet. And then stretch through your arms and your legs. Reach the arms overhead, stretching. And then bend your knees. Roll yourself off to the right. And then with your left hand, we'll press ourselves to seated. And then let's bring our hands together. Close your eyes just for a moment. And let's bring our hands to the forehead to remind us to have clear and loving thoughts. And our hands to the heart to remind us to have clear and loving intentions. And our hands to the mouth to remind us to have clear, loving communications. Sending out this wonderful energy to all beings everywhere. Namaste. That was Ekapada Kundanyasana. I am Leslie Fightmaster for Poppy and Seed. And please visit fightmasteryoga.com if you get a chance. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.